everybody, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, ushering you in MCAT Channel 189 and Facebook, YouTube, Internet World, uh, just telling about what's happening in Missoula, around the area, nation, and all sorts of um, interesting tidbits that's happening this weekend and more. It's time for Wake Up Missoula. Let's kick things off with is, um, it's hasn't been necessarily uncommon for a lot of restaurants to close over the winter. A um, couple of uh, businesses here in the city of Missoula, like Clyde Coffee and Imagination Brewing Company, closed for the winter to help deal with the uh, under uh, the costs of paying some of their staff, which a lot of people have been losing uh, their uh, jobs. Um, so the Missoula article by David Erickson said that U.S. business in these fields uh, in restaurants and bars have lost $250 billion uh, as of from 2020. Missoula will be hosting a downtown dine local week to promote dining out and encourage people to visit local businesses. Um, many businesses have started their own coalition. It's called Revive Missoula Bars and Restaurants, uh, RMBD, RMBR, which has uh, been uh, working and uh, communicating with the uh, Missoula Health Department to determine, you know, if it's safe, trying to make sure they're on the right page and moving forward and trying to get uh, safe environments so people can start going to restaurants uh, in in more numbers and in safer places. The Missoula Downtown Association will host this annual Downtown Missoula Awards for Businesses, which will be announced February 1st through the 5th. So, uh, they will be announcing um, the you know the best restaurants, the best bars in the city of Missoula as well. They do this annually as well. This is one of many uh, things businesses are doing to be more creative during this pandemic as well. I saw in the story that they referred to the uh, Ronan Street in Little Montana Restaurant and Catering that plans to open a food truck to hope uh, uh, to offset some of their costs that they lost during the winter time and doing some more catering in the summer as well. So that's what a lot of businesses have kind of done. Restaurants already have a, a tough time. Half of restaurants fail with the, the, within the first five years. And then I think it was like another 25% fail in the next, in like 10 years. So there's, there's, very, very, there's always a very slim chance for a lot of restaurants to kind of survive. But a lot of uh, businesses and uh, have kind of figured out how to shrink and expand and just figure out how to wait, uh, ways to continue their business while also uh, uh, adhering to uh, social distancing guidelines moving forward. Uh, this was part of Montana's plan to jumpstart the economy. Um, the next story uh, has also caused some stir in U.S. Um, as Montana moves forward on a plan to uh, pass the Montana Virus Liability Bill that would prevent virus-related lawsuits in businesses. So if a business were to serve uh, a hot steaming pile of COVID-19 to their customers, this law would basically... Uh, enable anyone from uh, suing these uh, bars, taverns, and restaurants and whatnot. And this is, uh, so far, Greg Gianforte wants a way to remove the mask mandate in Montana, but requires a safety net for numbers of vulnerable categories. He wants to make sure that the people who are in the vulnerable age to 75 and older have been vaccine vaccinated. And uh, speaking of vaccines, uh, according to the Department of Health and Human Services in the state of Montana, 17,000 folks have been vaccinated. So we're talking about bills now, and uh, one of the biggest things, of course, I only heard this uh, through uh, the City Council of Missoula, is that they wanted the uh, Montana legislature to vote against House Bill 113, which was a, uh, that would allow uh, Medicare providers to deny uh, medi uh, medical treatment for those uh, transitioning to another gender. And so this was a really, really slim margin. Republicans joined the 33 Democrat uh, minority in allowing people to receive medical attention regardless of their backgrounds. One of the Republicans who went from a yes to no in this case is from, this is Denley Lodge from St. Regis, uh, was one of the legislators who changed his vote stating, I thought excluding medical treatment for pretty much anything is a little bit of an overreach. Regardless of a transgender issue, it was unconstitutional to take away rights to medical treatment. In other words, the uh, in other news uh, as well, House Bill 112 is also part of the transgender uh, bill that would restrict uh, transgenders from um, uh, participating in high school sports. Um, it's it's a way for, and this bill doesn't necessarily seem to be uh, leaning towards uh, a no. It seems like this is going to pass, and so this bill would basically say that whatever gender you're assigned at birth would be 
is the is what you need to prove that you are eligible to that gender specific sport. So that's something that's happening in Montana. But part of the uh, issue with this as well is that the consequences that involve this could be federal funds being pulled to Mon Montana athletics as a whole. Um, another bill it's gained some traction is for child abuse cases. So this is one that actually is a part of uh, a small group, uh, well, a smaller group within the Yellowstone County, which is the biggest county in the state of Montana, and that's a Billings area are looking for uh, to start a uh, child uh, to look into child abuse cases and neglect, and it helps streamline some of the court appearances for some parents. In the neglected and abused child cases, social services would take away children from their parents and the parents would see the judge around 20 days. It would take about a month for the parents to see a judge and plead their case. But this pilot program would allow them to see the judge within 72 hours turnaround to see a judge and have visitation for parents to see their kid under supervision. Uh, but some judges say that this uh, over may be overturned, that their cases would be overturned with such a short turnaround. Yellowstone, uh, in these cases, Yellowstone saw 484 uh, cases of neglect and child abuse in 2020, but don't let uh, COVID-19 fool you because a lot of people have been uh, dealing with mental health and the stress of COVID-19, but in 2019, the numbers were similar with uh, 426 uh, dom uh, domestic uh, cases involving children. Uh, COVID-19 has been a reason for many domestic violence as a whole in the nation, even making it harder for social services to actually come visit some of these homes. Uh, with this bill passing, could expand across the state. Rural areas are still having to deal with some uh, access to lawyers and judges. A lot of the judges would have to travel to courthouse to courthouse to go to these cases, especially with the short turnaround. So that's one of the issues that they're moving forward on this. But this is a bill, the main benefit from this program would have less impact in foster emergency housing for children in the state of Montana. Also allowing kids to see their parents earlier would have less impact on the child's mental health. So um, that's kind of what's happening in and around the state of Montana. Legislature is a big deal because it only happens uh, once every two years. It's a biannual deal. So uh, the first thing they usually do is figure out the budget for the next session. So right now they're doing all these bills moving forward and we're just gonna kind of see how it all uh, happens and moves forward is that. So far, um, House Bill, I haven't heard anything from the House Bill 112, the transgender block, and this next bill, I, I didn't even see the uh, number of this particular House Bill, but you guys can look that up by going on to the website leg.mt.gov. Here, I'll just put up a, a, the page as well so you guys can check this out. Up next, we're going to have a promo video for uh, the library. Uh, it's going to be, um, yeah, I've shown this plenty of times before, but when I come back, I'm going to talk about some uh, new movies and new games that are coming out this week. Stay with me. MCAT is Missoula's community media resource. NCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. NCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home, in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. MCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio visual video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I pre-judge a movie, uh, entertaining uh, thing, whether it needs it or not. We're just kicking things off with Caged. 
in an unjust world where a man is illegally jailed for crimes he didn't commit. I assume because this movie is called Caged, and Caged is usually a pretty strict uh, title for uh, what they usually call jails as a corrections facility. Uh, anyways, uh, life on the inside can be difficult, and you can expect this guy to want to get out of jail and get justice for himself since the justice system failed him. That's always the case in some of these jail type movies and shows where the main character is a law abiding citizen thrown into a world and caged against his will, like animal. Um, of course, when I looked at it, a little bit on the synopsis, it's called a psychological thriller. So in many ways, a lot of this could even be happening in his head. And the greatest prison of all is the one that we make for ourselves in our brains. Caged. Out now. Up next is called Supernova. And no, it's not about the science, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, something to do with like Supernova. Or maybe like one of the guys is a... Um, scientist who start who studies like black holes and stuff like that anyways let's forget all that and this movie is basically about a couple they're uh they love each other all that stuff and one of them gets the, yeah you guessed it cancer everything's everything's perfectly fine like kind of like how like a uh, comedy romances are just like it's like uh this person really annoys me oh i love them so much and this one it's like i i really love this person that means they're going to die so enjoy a movie <laughs> about uh i don't know if they're actually gonna do a supernova but if they probably say supernova in the movie and you can be like they said it they said it supernova a movie that has uh stanley chuchi and colin firth uh the guy from the king's speech so hey it might be an interesting movie uh cyber shadow <sighs> the video game you know like yacht club games hey they're produced. They're they're not. They didn't develop this game, but they produced this game. Basically, they published. They're publishing house. But anyways, they're the ones that made Shovel Knight, and now they're producing this next game called Cyber Shadow. And basically, it's like Ninja Gaiden, but like futuristic uh, robots and all sorts of wacky stuff. And it's it's a platformer. It, there's really not much to it. It's more just like an action. Like you hit a bunch of things, you fight things, you gain abilities over time, then you use those abilities to fight harder bosses. And then at the very end of the game, you might fight bo fight all the bosses again. And it's like, oh, this is much easier with all my special power ups. Well, yeah, you know how to play the game now. It it slowly trains you as it challenges you. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. But yeah, anyways, um, there's really not much to say. I mean, like. I'm pretty sure there's something that's happening in the world, and he has to fight the big bad guy, and then it turns out that the bad guy is, um, I don't know, I, I don't know, some of these games, they try to keep it as simple as possible, and be like, this guy bad, you good, now do your thing, boom, anyways, that was Free Critic, and here in, here, up next, we got a new episode of Dub and Stuff, and this is from the movie, the 1945 movie, The Lady Confesses, up next, we'll have City Council, stay with me. I can't believe you use black magic. I'm sorry you can't afford a larger camera that makes so much noise we have to ADR it later and Christopher Nolan. I thought this was a low budget film. Uh, what do you do? Hmm. Uh, not bad. Guess this will have to do. Um, it'll do the job. Don't worry about that. And it's lightweight so I can do all sorts of things. Uh, I just hope it has ISO control and, uh, Histogram? Does it have histogram? Well, even the lowest DSLR cameras have histograms. All right, we're at five to set, sir. Oh, oh, thanks, Potsy. I'm gonna uh, just uh, take care of a couple things. Wow, that guy needs a bell on him. Well, so that's our fearless director. He's directed some of the greatest shows. He's a genius. Well, then why is he doing this indie crap right now? Well, after getting off those big budget films, he decided to, you know, jump on some indie circuits for art. Indie sci-fi? Hey, listen, if Twilight Zone can do it on a budget, we certainly can. And, you know, why not really expand on the deep depths of human darkness? Like, the, the director's a genius. You gotta trust his better judgment. All right, Miss DP, this AD has to go uh, help the DD. Better get to set. doop a doop a doop a doo <laughs> I told you for the last time, I can't remember that many lines. It's really, really hard. Listen, it's like God wrote this script for us, and you have to remember every single line, and you have to recite them perfectly. I just don't think there's enough hallway for me to say all those lines. The set designers have been working all day to extend the hallways, and you're going to know all your lines by the time they're finished. Stupid Hollywood actors and not remembering all their lines like they're supposed to. 
All right, all right. We're going to go on like a half an hour lunch break, you know, but not really lunch. So, yeah, just take five plus 30. Yeah. Yeah, I know what I said. What are you doing here? Man, I tell you, Aaron Sorkin doesn't understand. I don't know anything about all those crazy lines that you have to read. No, they're really hard. Maybe I could, you know, put a, a, a line cues on my camera. Yeah? You would do that for me? That would be really nice. There's a couple turns in the hallways we could probably use to cut. <gasps> yeah, that would be wonderful. I've... I've never been this close to a DP before. Well, that's why I'm doing it handheld. Indie style, you know? I get real close to my actors. I think I feel more comfortable having you around. Alright, I'll be the one that tells them. Hey ladies, five minutes to set, okay? Well then, I better get up and get going. <laughs> Time to look fabulous. As we move forward through the Montana legislature, Missoula has uh, s um, mandated a proclamation uh, for Monday, January 25th, and it is a way to uh, basically take away the voice of big corporations and big money from an interfering with future elections. And here is John Engen, mayor of Missoula, with more. Whereas on November 8, 2011, 74.67% of Missoula voters passed referendum 7653, urging our state and federal elected officials to amend the United States Constitution to state that corporations are not human beings. And whereas on November 6, 2012, 74.9% of Montana voters passed initiative 166, asserting that the people of Montana regard money as property, not speech, and that the people of Montana regard the rights under the United States Constitution as rights of human beings, not rights of corporations, and called for a United States constitutional amendment. And whereas the well-being of Missoula citizens is harmed with each passing year, that the constitutional amendment is delayed as our common good and our common wealth is being redirected on behalf of the few. And whereas the money that is overwhelming our elections and intimidating our candidates and elected officials makes it more and more difficult for the citizens of Missoula to protect the common good and our commonwealth. And whereas Missoula wishes to give evidence of our commitment every year until the United States Constitution is amended to say that corporations are not people and money is not speech, and the proposed We the People Amendment most clearly states our intent. Now, therefore, I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, do hereby proclaim January 25th, 2021, as We the People Amendment Day. In Last year, if you can remember, uh, the election between Steve Bullock and Steve Daines, I remember because it was everywhere. Uh, the big thing that was happening is that so much money was flooded into Montana, both the uh, DNC, the GOP, especially in the Senate race, uh, you can walk 10 feet without slipping and falling on a, uh, a banner for Danes or Bullock in Montana. Um, but yeah, you, could, you can even lock your doors and get away from the door-to-door, -door, get out the vote people as well. It was kind of ridiculous. There was so much money in here. It even made national news uh, how much money was put forward with this. This next person, who has been a part of these... Um, this organization's uh, the organization to prevent corporations from interfering with elections. Uh, this is uh, an organization's corporations and money's and money aren't people. This is Mr. Uh, Luce, and this is what he had to say. Across the nation, almost half a million people, 476,785, have signed the petition that calls for the constitutional amendment in Montana. We know we have a strong majority of voters behind us because our 2012 Citizens Initiative calling for the constitutional amendment passed with 75% of the voters and a majority in every county. And, nation and nationwide, these margins of support are still holding strong. It's a different kind of effort when you know you're in the majority, that is, the challenge we all face is to protect the commitment of Montanans, knowing that the money and corporations that were turned loose by Citizens United will work tirelessly to make us forget the history 
that tells us why this is so important to the future of our democracy. He dives into a little bit more about Montana's history with doing our, our with the uh, the plan, uh, the uh, the bill that passed into law in the state of Montana, which was called Our Montana Anti-Corruption Act of 1912. And part of this. For almost a century, the state of Montana prevented any kind of big money from interfering with any future elections or anything like that, until the Supreme Court overturned this on January 21st, 2010. The Supreme Court issued a ruling in Citizens United versus the court upheld the reporting and disclaimer requirements for independent expenditures in electioneering communications, which basically means this happened back in 2008. Uh, this is when Hillary Clinton wanted to release a 30-minute film of some sort to be like, I'm running for president, and this is going to be an epic video about me running for president as the first woman president. Uh, so in her first attempt, this was part of the uh, 2008 Democratic National Convention in conjunction with Hillary's first attempt at the White House. Um, of course, I kind of went through a rabbit hole here. You can look up more information as well. It's called the Our Montana Anti-Corruption Act of 1912. You can look into more history of that. And also another big one is Citizens United. Uh, so you guys can uh, check that out and more. Um, hey, it's it's definitely a weird time that we're living in in terms of just like uh, being bombarded with information here and there. YouTube has ads on there that uh, had a lot of those political ads as well, depending upon your VPN source. And VPN is basically where you tell your computer is and, you know, the region that you live in. So, yeah, they track that. <laughs> uh, okay, so in terms of corruption uh, in the state of Montana, just a little bit more history. Uh, one of the biggest uh, forms of corruption was Marcus Staley. Marcus Daly, Copper King, uh, not necessarily corruption, but he used a lot of his money and sway and power to sway elections. And if you're against Marcus Daly, you had your political career was pretty much over at that time. So that's why they moved forward with uh, the proclamation and the sustained since 1912. But at the same time, you got to understand that every time you go to Helena, the state of Montana's capital, there is a copper dome, which was uh, donated by uh, Marcus Staley. So there's a little more information on that. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Marcus Staley, you can go to a book called Empty Mansions. Uh, MCAT also covered this on one of our uh, uh, Mansfield, uh, I think it's the President Lecture Series. It could be pro provost, but if you look up Empty Mansions and MCAT, you can find the lecture in which they talk about this book. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a lot of information. Uh, now we're going to get to my third clip, uh, which is the next big thing is Parks and Rec Master Fee Schedule, uh, which means raising rates on Parks and Rec at use and equipment checkouts. They do this every single year, but this particular one is the how they evolved it to a way to uh, adhere towards you know social distancing guidelines and having... Uh, and figuring out exactly what is uh, what constitutes as a small group. So here's uh, Shirley uh, Kinsey, who presented talks about how they adjusted to smaller gatherings in Missoula Parks. We added a permit for smaller groups. Um, we got a lot of feedback that that our um, one size fits all didn't, and so um, we opted to do an hourly rate for smaller groups. Um, 10 or less uh, nonprofit for $10, uh, can have a permit for $10 an hour and for-profit business $15 an hour for 10 or less people. I think this is gonna help out a lot of the fitness groups that are using our parks and trails and uh, for their businesses and their programs. So as you saw, $10 an hour for 10 and lower, um, for 10 and lower amount of people who are representatives of like private citizens and nonprofits, and then $15 per hour for 10 and lower for anybody who's doing like a promotional thing as well. So uh, I don't want to touch things on, uh, on the many changes overall. They didn't talk too much about it, so we're just going to move on. And one of the things that they were talking about is the growth of the city of Missoula. There's going to be more housing and Remington Flats, which is a part of uh, kind of like, okay, so the city of Missoula uh, is growing, obviously. There's a lot of people who, there's a high demand for housing, and uh, a little bit further west of of the uh, Mullen area, so you go to the area up Mullen, there's going to be able to be building a whole bunch of new houses, develop it up there. About, I would say about 
three miles away, George Elmer Drive. There's another place called Remington Fletch, which is northwest of 44 Ranch Estates, uh, up Mullen Road. Um, I'm not too interested in talking to too much about the development. They're uh, they're basically this is the approval of Phase One moving forward. Uh, they're go they're uh, they're going to grow our community out of the Mullen area to keep up with housing demands. Um, Council member, uh, council member uh, Heather Harp reflects on this development and just the growth of Missoula as a whole. Every development project that comes before our body is always contentious. And it's there's always a part of me anyway that wants to try and design by committee. But that is not necessarily the function of this particular body. That is done administratively and through the and with the developer and, and his or her team. Um, I wanted to just really kind of call out the concern about whether or not this is an affordable type of project um, because uh, the author of our recent letter um, called that out and I think it's worth um, commenting on. Um, today's prices are certainly not affordable by the standard of our average wages. And that is definitely a conundrum that we face. Um, but the reality is uh, the, the prices that we see for new construction is reflective of the rising cost of, of materials in the construction trades and prevailing wages, because that's really important if we want to try to solve for the other side of the equation of affordability. And that's making sure that we have living wages. So those are gonna go hand in hand. And then of course, um, driving the bottom line is the cost of land. And every one of us that um, sells a home, we are a capitalist in, at heart because we're trying to capture the best price that we can get for the homes that we sell. So there's a whole complicated reason why prices get so expensive. Here on council, we are trying to move the needle as fast as we possibly can to move things through our process as fast as we can to try and reduce the number of conditions, which ultimately would add to the price of the project. So we, we, we appreciate the feedback for doing all that we can. And Housing in Missoula has been a seeing a series of price hikes in just the last year alone. The demand of people moving to Missoula and flocking to Missoula has grown even more uh, for money. And, and those in Missoula looking for houses are having a difficult time finding the right place that matched their home requirements. Uh, Missoula is one of those places that the cost of housing does not match the wages. And that's kind of a true throughout the entire nation. But then there was a whole nother meeting about it that I talked about is there's a displacement ratio and Montana is definitely one of the top five in terms of displacement. Uh, Spokane is uh, higher up and Miami is also one of those things that are also really higher up in terms of the displacement rate ratio. And DRR uh, basically means that housing is way too expensive for the cost of uh, living. The cost of living is way too much than wages. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they move forward on the phase one of the subdivision. I don't want to get into too, too much in terms of the controversy when it comes to housing. It's, it's an ongoing issue, and there's a lot going on there. And I, I'm not particularly talking about that in this particular meeting, but let's move on to uh, admin finance. So I, didn't, I wanted to show you some clips from admin finance committee meeting, but I was only able to watch the meeting and kind of assess what they were talking about. So during the admin finance committee, the city continues the efforts to reduce energy costs and move towards 100% clean energy. So far, Northwest Energy has been looking into moving towards this too, but with this meeting uh, would be towards green tariffs. So the city of Missoula would add additional uh, funding towards uh, moving towards green energy, solar, um, wind, and all that stuff. And this is a good first step in moving forward with uh, green energy and moving to 100% clean energy for the city of Missoula. Green tariffs seem like a tax, but would be used in a utility rate design and allow for it to pay for itself and allow for people to opt out. But b basically giving the people the tools and the ability to go to this uh, elec the electricity source would allow for these green tariffs to be added to it as an option. This is something the city of Missoula want to work towards and hopefully hold the door open for businesses and individuals who wish to move towards green energy. And Missoula's goal for green energy is 2030. For this meeting and more, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us for more information about what's happening within the city of Missoula. Um, hopefully up next, I will have the uh, Missoula Health Department's COVID update. So if not, I'm going to come right back. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. 
Today is Thursday, January 21st, and this is our COVID briefing. We've now had 7,371 cumulative positive cases of COVID-19 in Missoula County to date with 47 new cases since yesterday. We've had 60 deaths associated with COVID-19 and currently we have eight Missoula County residents and seven non-county residents hospitalized in Missoula County. We now have 3,008 active COVID-19 cases. Those active cases and their identified close contacts do remain in isolation and quarantine and are being supported as needed. Our current average incidence per 100,000 people is 37. And just a reminder, we really want to see that number get down to 25. All of these numbers, as well as the graphs and figures associated, are found on our website at MissoulaInfo.com. The state of Montana is reporting 90,649 cumulative COVID cases, which is up 408 new cases since yesterday. There are now 4,841 active cases with 137 active hospitalizations across the state. And there have been 1,100 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. The University of Montana has had 533 cumulative UM associated cases since the beginning of fall semester with three new cases reported since yesterday. And there are currently 17 active UM associated cases. First, I just wanna talk for a moment about case investigation and contact tracing. When we saw our last spike in cases in October, we were having difficulty keeping up with case investigation and contact tracing. At that time, we moved to a new system called Sarah Alert. Sarah Alert is a web-based system that was specifically designed to assist health departments to do rapid case investigation and contact tracing specifically for COVID-19. Since changing over to that system and adding some additional staff, we are able to continue to complete case investigation within 24 hours of receiving notification of a new case. And in most cases, we're able to complete contact tracing within 36 hours. So we've definitely seen an improvement there. Um, it is really important that you l take a listen to your voicemail and answer your phone. Um, if you're getting phone calls from a 258 number, 880, um, we've got people that are using their cell phones. So definitely try and catch those calls so that we can get through that process quickly. Next, I wanna talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. There is still limited vaccine availability in Montana and in Missoula County. While we have been able to get weekly shipments of the vaccine into our county, the amount of vaccine that we are able to receive is really dictated by the amount of vaccine allocated to the state as a whole. Right now, Montana is only able to receive 13,525 doses of vaccine per week to be distributed throughout the state. Missoula County, and this includes all providers in the county as a whole, is only able to receive a, a total of approximately 1,500 doses of vaccine per week. So while we know that everyone is anxious to get vaccinated, it's going to take some time for us to get the vaccine widely distributed due to the limited amount of vaccine that we're actually able to receive. And we do not know when our allocation may be increased, but we will keep you posted as we continue to move forward. At the health department, we are working to finalize a lease agreement with Southgate Mall to utilize the Old Lucky's market space for vaccinations. We hope to have that clinic up and running in the next week or week and a half. Um, in the meantime, we continue working with our community partners to move into vaccinations for those who fit into the 1B category. As we move through these phases, I just want to remind you that if you were in a previous phase, like if you were a healthcare provider that was unable to get in during 1A, um, to get vaccinated, you'll still be able to get a vaccination appointment in that next phase. The current estimate for the number of people who fit into phase 1B in Missoula County is approximately 39,000 people. The Emergency Operations Center has stood up their type three incident management team to help get the information out to the public about where and how to sign up for vaccination appointments. They will be posting that information at covid19.missoula.co we will also have a link to that website on our website at MissoulaInfo.com. Last, I just want to remind everybody that we are still seeing the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. So if you are experiencing any symptoms, please call 258-INFO to schedule an appointment through our drive through testing facility on Flynn Lane. And that's it for my daily briefing today. As always, you can um, subscribe to us on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Click that notification bell so that you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. 
Um, you can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department's Facebook page. You can check out MissoulaInfo.com for um, all of the most recent information about vaccinations at the health department, as well as um, basic vaccine information, um, frequently asked questions, and all of our data and our numbers that I just reported here are also found on that website. Um, so check that out. And um, again, call 258-INFO if you have any questions or if you would like to schedule an appointment for a test through our drive through clinic. And that is it for today. So until Tuesday, everybody stay healthy. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for me to wrap up my show. I haven't heard too much about what's happening with MCAT in terms of hosting people again inside the new Missoula Public Library. Uh, part of this pandemic had us transitioning out of our old location. Uh, if we were still at our old location, we still have, uh, we, we have open doors but have limited capacity for amount of people. But overall, uh, we're still waiting on the go ahead from the Missoula Public Library in terms of uh, when MCAT can start doing their uh, normal operations and I believe that our hours are going to be slightly changed but for the most part we're going to stay very we, we would stay stay fairly consistent with the Tuesday through Saturday kind of schedule 11 to uh, 7 eight hours a day they, we said that we'd be open for uh, 40 hours a week so for the public to take advantage of being able to check out camera equipment uh, being able to use editing software for all the open hours of the library as well. So, uh, but in terms of staff, staff would be there for the 40 hours a week doing all that stuff. Anyways, that's kind of, that we're, it, there's no new information right there. I can't really say too much because there's, I don't know too much what, what's going on, but that's kind of what I've been hearing anecdotally. Um, moving on. Um, oh, uh, the Zach is performing a show tonight as well. Uh, let me just quickly look that up. So the Zach is hosting another uh, Zach social distancing session, and they do it. They've been doing this every single Saturday, and we're on our twentieth show. So we've been doing this for quite a, some time. And uh, this next show, I'm going to look it up real quick. It's Arrowleaf. I should remember that because it was in the back of my mind. Um, Arrowleaf it has been waiting a long time to share their most recent album, Getting By with the World. When they finished tracking in mid March, um, Arrowleaf is the twentieth performance of the series social distancing session live production partnership between Zach and Missoula's community media resource. Um, <laughs> the shows will be streamed to MCATS, uh, to, uh, Zach's Facebook and YouTube and, um, MCATS, uh, channel local live so if you uh, can't find it on facebook and on youtube which is pretty easy all you got to do is type in zach missoula z-a-c-c -C, which stands for zootown arts community center so if you look up that you can find their channel on youtube um but yeah i mean we're going to be doing that this weekend we do have uh we are going to be working with kgba and the zach as a venue for a friday show coming up i don't know exactly when that's going to be happening I believe it's going to be happening I want to check oh the 26th so it's going to be at the end of February I'll tell you guys more about it it's called play it forward Ash and Natani and Elijah uh, J Jalil from uh, here Montana um, I probably should have uh, read that before I said it <laughs> but anyways um, I just want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramp. take care guys